Huge shout out to my my little homie Brigham. He's only like five four, but he's been up on a stool on this camera, um, getting this nice macro view for uh, for the uh, for the video. Chicha, uh, I'm being asked your website real quick. I'm going to put it in the chat. Yeah, it's just uh, flyfishfood.com. Gotcha. It's in the chat, Alan. And then I'm also recording this, and I'll have it up tonight. So. There, there are no excuses to not be able to tie this fly between the two videos. So I better not screw this up. All right, so we'll just get started unless anyone has any other objections or questions before we get going. And everybody's on mute, so we're good. All right. <laughs> so, I, see th I see thumbs up. They'll hit you up with questions as you get going. Perfect. So as you can see, first things first, this is kind of an interesting hook. This is the Tiemco 708 hook. It's a 2X long hook with, a, I think, a 40 degree bend. And the cool thing about this hook is it will make your fly ride hook point up and uh, has a, a really good gap on it. So you can drag this literally on the bottom of the stream and it's not going to get hung up. Another thing I really like about this fly is you can, you can vary the weight that you put on it. So I'm going to use double pupil eye on this fly. But you could use anything from, you know, a double pupil eye to um, a tungsten eye, things like that, or even like a brass eye. So you can cover all the different depths, or maybe you have a, a stream that's not very deep and you don't need a lot of weight. So you can, you can adjust that quite a bit. So I guess we'll just get going. The thread that I'm, well, well and, I, and I saw the material list. Anytime we make a material list for a fly on our site, um, we usually have the, the original material that it's tied with and then some substitutes. Just due to supply chain things, we like to have substitutes on all the flies. So um, the material list looked quite large, but it's just because it did include all those substitutes in it. So don't worry too much about that. Um, so we'll just get started. I'm using this six aught thread from Semperfly. This stuff is awesome. Um, it's not the nano silk, it's just their classic wax thread. And we'll just start tying that in right here, right about the bend. Sorry if there's tool noise or silence. I just gotta concentrate. All right, so I'll start by tying that barbell eye in right on that, that corner of the hook. So it's kind of hard to tie it in right there, but start with a few light wraps and just gradually crisscross that. And then once you have it, wrap around the eyes like this. Wow, this is really good. I can actually see what I'm doing too. It is so crisp, I'm so impressed with it. Dang, it's that, that uh, Utah broadband out here, you know? <laughs> so I'm just filling up the eyes with a little bit of thread. It just kind of helps this fly not twist around. Brigham, did you steal my super glue again? Just kidding, we'll, we'll use something else. I've got a little bit of like uh, gel super glue. I'll just put that in here right on the eyes and that will, that will keep her from spinning. I hope I don't glue my fingers to this because that's a lot of glue. It will make for a good video. All right, so there we go. The eyes are on there. As you can see, that's those are quite large eyes for this fly and that's on purpose because I do want it to get down fairly quickly. So the next step is to tie in the tail. So I have this little whiting, I think we call these bugger patches. We only have them in our shop. So we have a really good relationship with whiting farms. We go there quite a bit. And Tom Whiting will come to us sometimes and he'll have a big bin full of just feathers that he doesn't know what to do with. And this was one of them. So this is a like a, a hen hackle bugger patch. And they're just, they're really good for this kind of stuff. So we had them dye, dye a bunch of these for us in real fishy colors. And they're only 10 bucks for the whole pelt. So really cool product. Anyway, sorry, Brigham just corrected me. They're called bugger hackle patches. Thank you, Brigham. How do they, are they good hackle? Do they hackle well? 
Um, yeah, absolutely. They're they're good for real soft stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna this is kind of like a, a woolly bugger style fly. So I am gonna palmer one of these through like a woolly bugger, so you'll get to see it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off two of these, and you can see they kind of curve every which way. And so I'm just gonna match those up like this. So I've pinched those together. This might be the hardest part of the fly. So I'm gonna pinch those together just like that so that they mirror each other, they kind of cup into each other. And then I'm gonna measure how long I want that to be. So I want that tail to be roughly the same length of the whole fly. So I'll just grab this right here and I'm just gonna start pulling those fibers off. So I've made some of the stems bare and then I'm just gonna cut those off. So I have the two little stems. Now, those stems do wanna cross. See how those stems are crossing each other? The reason for that is because the curvature of the feather makes them wanna do that. So if, when I tie these in, I wanna make sure that a lot of times when you put pressure on those, they will uncross. And once they uncross, you just tie those in. And that will keep those feathers nice and straight on the back of your hook. And these are, these are pretty dang durable too. So the, the thing about a sculpin is the tail is very, very thin. And when you strip this fly, that tail will kind of make it dart back and forth a little bit. Do I need to push this this way? Would that help? Did that help anybody? Help me. So, all right. Thank you, that's what matters. Okay. Is, um, is the connection choppy for anyone? I just had Struan message me that the, uh, the sound is choppy, but it sounds great to me. Is does Cheech sound good to all of you? Yeah, thumbs up, awesome. Okay. Yeah, no issues. They tell me I have a voice and a face for radio. So that's uh, that works for me. Okay, now back to your question, April. So on this pelt, I picked some of the feathers that are nice and rounded at the ends. If you guys ever tie matukas, this is a great feather for that as well. Um, but also closer to the edge of this saddle, I can pick, pluck off a feather that looks more like this. So you can see it's a lot more pointy on the end. That's what I'm gonna to use to palmer the body of this fly. And this fly is really simple actually. So I'm just gonna go like this, tie it in by the tip. So if you tie it in by the tip, when you wrap that forward, it's gonna give that really good woolly bugger presence where it goes from small to a little bit fuller up by the eye. So we'll do that. So I'm gonna tie that in right back by the tail. And then just cover it up. All right. Let me see if you, so you can see that one hanging right there. And bonus points for anyone who knows what my vice's nickname is. My vice does have a nickname. So see if anybody knows it. <clears throat> um, all right, so in the video, uh, Wapsi has some materials that were designed specifically for Dave Whitlock's flies. And unfortunately, it's really hard to get stuff from Wapsi right now. So I'm just gonna switch it up to Arizona Semi Seal. It's a great material for all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna use this for the body and the head. On the original near enough sculpt and up by the, the eye, they put a little section of black dubbing. We're gonna kind of skip that because it doesn't really even show. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just dub some of this semi-seal and we're gonna cover up our hook shank. And it can kind of be messy and ratty. I gotta make this look like I've done this before. It already looks fishy. I think I'd fish it as is just with the eyes and the tail. That's terrible, it looks terrible. <laughs> so what you're saying is that dog will hunt. That, dog, right. <laughs> that steelhead will eat just about anything. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm kind of creating a taper on this fly from skinny to fat, up closer to the eye. Wow. 
like that. So we got a little bit of bugginess going on. Now, before we Palmer this other little hackle through here, we're going to put some flash into this and there's going to be flash running down the sides of this pattern. And I just grabbed the closest thing that was near my desk and it was polar flash, which is a really cool material. And I got fans blowing to keep the cameras cool or they'll overheat. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I have a, a section of this flash. I'm just going to tie this in right at the eye, tie one on one side, and then just take this top section and pull it over onto the other side. So we have these bat wings going on here. Brig, I was just joking, the fan's fine. Can we cut it? I can cut no, it. No, leave the fan on because I'm hot too. Brigham's trying to get me comfortable. I am poaching him from you big time. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, real quick, there's a question from by LJ and LJ, you feel free to take yourself off mute at any time. I bet you Cheech would welcome it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Pipe in. You know what, LJ, you go for it. You ask him your okay. question. Okay. I just was wondering like the color of the dumbbell eyes, like how much you think that matters. Does it act sort of as a hot spot or? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it does. Um, we do this one with yellow, red's another really popular color, orange is a popular color. I'm just doing yellow because that's what Dave put on his, but there's a okay. fly um, that we tie that's one of Lance Egan's flies that works here. Um, that, that fly is called the Big Junk, and it's similar to this, but it uses red eyes. Okay. So, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can uh, switch up the eyes. I mean, all flies are kind of confidence. Oh, Brig brought me another another fly pattern that i do a slider so if you look on the bottom of this like i use red eyes on that a lot of gold flash and then some deer hair head so that's kind of a cool one but i i did choose red for that one so but i i could have done yellow too so as davy mcphail would say it's up to yourself <laughs> you just do whatever you want all right so what I'm going to do when I start wrapping this hackle from the back is I'm going to pull this flash down to the side and I'm going to catch it on one side with the hackle and then on the other. Try to keep those separated by side. I maybe used a little bit too much flash, but we're going to roll with it. And then I'm just going to take that hackle and roll and uh, wrap that all the way up to the head. As you can see, this is really, really buggy hackle. It's gonna move quite well in the water. Get rid of the excess. And then if we, if we have any stragglers, we just pull those back and turn them into the fly. So as you can see, that's a really cool little uh, profile. I'm gonna take those flash pieces now and I'm just gonna trim those about like that. So, now, April, you can say, I will fish it just like that, and it will be acceptable. I will fish just like that. It's fantastic. All right, cool. Um, all right, now, just, just one step left on this. And, you know, if we have enough time, we can do other flies, too. We got a bunch of stuff. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to build a dubbing loop, and we're going to put that in between the eyes, okay? So... Dubbing loops are, are kind of an enigma for some people, but they, they can be really, really easy. One thing that I do, especially if I'm putting a lot of pressure on my dubbing loops or if I'm going to be brushing it out, is I'm going to double up the dubbing loop. So I don't know if you can see this very well. It's kind of blurry, but I'm going to build a, a dubbing loop and then I'm going to go back around it. So there are four total strands of thread. Let me see if I can get that in, in view. So you can see the four strands, two on each side. And then I'm going to go behind those loops and, and uh, trim it off or uh, lock it in. How's our temp, Brig? Golden. Good? Yeah. Okay, sorry. All right, so I have a super reinforced dubbing loop now that I can just twist up like crazy and it's not going to break. My favorite dubbing twister is this little CNF top twister. Spins really, really fast. It's a really simple design. Hard to find right now because... Uh, 
CNF is going through some changes with their distributorship. So anyway, I'm gonna stick that, that in to my loop. And then I'm gonna build it. Here's a little hack too. If you ever build dubbing loops with dubbing, and, and if you find that the dubbing just kind of goes all over the place and it doesn't really wanna sit right in the loop, what I do is I cut a corner off my bag. And then when you pull the dubbing out of the bag like that, it all kind of just lines up. So if I pull that dubbing out, it's lined up just like this, perfect to put in that dubbing loop. So if I just pull out a little bit at a time, it'll all come out like that and I'll be able to build a, a nice loop. All right, so as you can see, there's a really nice uniform dubbing loop. And now I'll just twist that up with a little tool. Boom, it twists up really, really fast. And then this is one of the best streamer tools ever invented, Velcro. On the other side, there's a little comb. But this is made by Stonfo. Um, it's like 10 bucks. And I, I don't think I can tie without it on my desk. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to pick this dubbing and just kind of get it ready to tie in. All right, now this part can kind of be a little bit confusing. So instead of just wrapping it around the, the hook shank and leaving a bunch of gaps where the eye is tied in, I'm actually going to wrap it around the eyeballs. And I'll try to leave my vise like this to show you. So I'm going to do one full turn around be behind the eyes. The next turn, I'm gonna come, this is like upside down and backward for me. I'm gonna come down through the eye, but I'm gonna go around that eye. You see that? And then I'm gonna do that again on the other eye, just around that eye. So once I do that, it should leave me with barely enough to do like one to two more turns around that that hook, catch that loop with my thread. This is kind of the part where it's all hands. Um, if you guys ever want to see this in, in more detail, this is the technique that I use on the Cheech Leech. So on the Cheech Leech video, I show that, that technique quite a bit more in detail. So I'm just going to come in here and trim that off. So you just figure eight it around the dumbbell eyes? Well, yeah, kind of. I didn't figure eight it. I actually wrapped it around the dumbbell eye itself and then onto the other side, I wrapped it around it. So it's not even wrapping it around the hook shank and that just gives a nice full head. All right, so I'll just whip finish this. And now, once this is all tied in, I can really get aggressive with my with my brush and give that a nice brush back because a sculpin, if anything, a sculpin has a very large head profile. So you want it to be real bulky up at the head and then slim right down by the tail. So anyway, that's pretty much the finished fly. Um, Umpqua sells these in olive and in tan. Um, but we, we have a cool color called golden olive that works really well too. So, and then also in like jet black, like this is just a really good overall streamer pattern. You see a lot of guys that are fishing these really big, long streamers, but a lot of times if you fish just a small one, you know, you'll, you'll catch big fish steel. It's, it's just really easy for them to eat a really small fly like this. So a lot of times if you put it in front of them, and even if they, they chase it a little bit, it's, it's not, much, not much more for them just to eat it. And a lot of times when we fish this, we're gonna fish uh, two streamers that are four feet apart on like three X. So that three X tip, it's real thin, it'll cut through the water and uh, very, very effective fishing technique here. The other thing that I like about this is this, this uh, hook point is very, very long. 
Um, so before I fish this, we'll mash down the barb. I guess we'll do that right now. We'll just mash that barb down, give it a little rotate. And these TMCO hooks mash so nicely, but this is just a, a great fly, catches lots of fish and spin around for a long time. 